Kidnapped Santa by Anna Lynn Riley. Chapter 6 The Only Toy Store. On top of the store was the biggest balloon strapped down with cables. The balloon was in the shape of a man. The name on the balloon man's vest was Monsieur Gâteau Fruitier. It's him! Lauren shouted. Look at his hat! He's wearing a Santa hat! He's the kidnapper! Who's the kidnapper? asked a tall blonde man with a television camera. Him! Lauren pointed to the balloon. He stole my kitty! He sucked her up with a vacuum! By now, Lauren's face was swollen red with anger. Suddenly, the man with the television camera was facing Lauren and asking her questions. She gave her answers into his microphone. Your kitty? the television man asked. Yes, that man stole my kitty. Lauren kept pointing up at the balloon on top of the store. He sucked her up with a large vacuum, and he's got her somewhere. He's the man who's going to kill Santa Claus. Kill Santa Claus? The television reporter was sincerely curious. Uh-huh, Lauren nodded. He said so in his clues. He put clues inside our balloons, and one of the clues said he's going to put Santa Claus in an Arctic lake on New Year's Eve. Arctic lakes grow thick, thick ice. Santa's elves won't hear him calling for help. Did the clues tell you which lake? asked the television man. Nope, we have to find out so we can save Santa. All the children with their parents must have heard Lauren shouting because soon we were surrounded with a zillion kids screaming and pushing, trying to speak to the television man. We got clues too, they squealed. He's going to kill Santa Claus. It's him, it's him. It's the Santa killer, they chanted. The television man wanted to speak to Grandpa, but because of the crowd, he couldn't get close enough. We all hung on tightly to each other's hands so we wouldn't get lost in the mob of shoppers. Then we saw a woman coming out of the store without any shopping bags. She started waving her arms and hollering. Next, a man came out. He didn't have any shopping bags either. He joined the hollering woman. What are they saying? I asked Grandpa. It's hard to hear over all this noise, he said, but they're saying something about the prices. Too high, I think. Too high? Mum said toys are on sale on Boxing Day, Lauren shrieked. There was more hollering and more people coming out of the store, all with furious faces and all without shopping bags. The television man was moving as fast as he could through the crowd to get to the hollering people. I felt a tug as Grandpa pulled us away from the store. I figured he was going to get out of there fast before there was some sort of riot. He pulled us fast and hard until we were practically running towards his car. Slow down, McKenna begged. I can't go so fast. Grandpa picked her up and carried her the rest of the way while we all tried to keep pace. We were out of breath when we got to the car. I fell into the seat. So did Liam and Lauren. We were panting, trying to catch our breath. McKenna wasn't panting because she got carried. Grandpa was sure puffing, though. It was a few minutes before I got my voice back. Why did you walk so fast, Grandpa? I asked, but he didn't hear me. Grandpa was already driving away at full speed. He didn't even ask us if our seat belts were done up. We hurried to clasp them. Grandpa drove very, very fast until we got to the highway. Then he slowed down and I could see his shoulders slump a little. He let out a big sigh. No one had said a word all that way. Luke, we needed to get out of there. When that many people get mad, it means trouble. I'm sorry you kids won't be getting any toys today, but it's better we didn't stick around. Grandpa's voice was a bit shaky. He was nervous. When we got home, Mom, Dad, Uncle, and Auntie were particularly glad to see us. We saw the riot on the news, said Auntie. I'm so glad you didn't stay at the only toy store. She gave us all a big hug. Thanks for getting them out of there, she told Grandpa. Mom spoke next. I'm glad you're all okay. It was terrible what happened at the only toy store. 
So many people were angry about the high prices that they started a demonstration. Small children were taken to hospital because they got crushed or trampled in the crowds. They're okay, but it was scary. We were all praying that you wouldn't stay and try to shop. Did you see me on TV? Lauren asked. No, what do you mean? Mum wanted more information. I was on TV. A man asked me questions, and I told him that the big balloon on the top of the store was the mean man who killed my kitty with his vacuum. What's this all about? Dad asked Grandpa. I couldn't hear all that Lauren was saying. Maybe it'll be on the dinner news, said Grandpa. As if there wasn't enough action already going on at the ranch, Yuki started barking and growling. Someone was at the front door. I went with Grandpa to see who it was. In walked Uncle Sid and Auntie Nicole. Boy, was I ever glad to see them. I liked them a whole lot. We hugged and kissed, and by now, everyone was at the front door hugging and kissing. We didn't expect you for another few days. What happened? Grandpa asked. Couldn't ski, Uncle Sid said. Couldn't get near the lifts. This toy thing is affecting everyone. The ski hills will make a bundle this Christmas. It took us all day just to get home, Auntie Nicole added. The roads have a pile of cars on them, all going skiing. When parents realized what was going on with the toy thing, they packed up their kids and took them to the hills. It's a living zoo out there. Does this mean you lose the tour money? Grandpa wondered. We'll lose a little, said Uncle Sid, but most of our people just wanted to get out of there, so they told us they wouldn't be asking for refunds. They understood that it wasn't our fault. Slopes were fine until noon today. My Uncle Sid and Auntie Nicole owned a ski tourism business. We're glad you're here, said my other auntie. Come on in and relax. So what's this about some weirdo kidnapping Santa? Auntie Nicole asked. CNN was flashing update on the television screen. So Grandpa ran over to the TV and turned up the volume. Shoppers are outraged at the high prices. The ride has sent 12 people to hospital in critical condition, with many others injured, though none of those injuries are considered serious. Our correspondent is at the scene here in Atlanta. Tom, what's the mood out there right now? Pretty angry, Derek. Shoppers were expecting the usual Boxing Day sale prices. Instead, they're shocked to find all the toys at triple the cost. Most people leave without buying a thing, including those who plan to do next year's Christmas shopping. Animosity and disappointment are ringing in the end of this year, Derek. Tom, do we know any more about Monsieur Gâteau Fruitier, the new owner of the only toy store? One report has come in, Derek, saying that Gato Fruitier bought out every toy company around the globe. I hadn't noticed that Dad wasn't in the room watching TV with us. He suddenly barged in, holding a piece of paper. Murray just sent this fax saying that all central post offices are in an upheaval with the number of shipments between Japan, Korea, and Quebec. They can't keep up with the demand. Shipments are running behind and now some postal workers are stealing boxes of toys because they're so upset. It's a federal offense to steal mail, my dad said, his voice very serious. But I understand how they feel. The phone rang. It was Grandma. Grandpa put her on speakerphone. This gâteau fruitier now owns every doll, every train set, every stuffed animal in the world. He's even threatening to buy out craft stores, but the owners aren't cooperating. I'll call you again when I know more. Grandpa finished the conversation with Grandma while we all sat there stunned. Finally, Auntie Nicole said, So what do you kids think about all this? McKenna jumped off the couch. This fruit man kidnapped Santa and he's going to kill him if we don't find out which ice lake he's going to put him in. Kill him? Auntie Nicole asked, her eyebrows twisted up and her forehead all wrinkled. There's Lauren, shouted Liam, pointing at the television. Grandpa turned up the volume on the TV even louder. Sure enough, Lauren was telling everyone about mean Gato Fruitier 
right there on TV. The television man had interviewed other children as well, and they all agreed that Gatto Frutti was the new mean Santa Claus. This is Tom Callahan reporting for CNN Live. Stay with us to see the events of this story unfold around the world, only here on CNN. I told you, everyone knows this is the same man who sent us the balloon clues, Lauren said. What balloon clues, Uncle Sid asked. We filled Auntie Nicole and Uncle in on what had happened so far. Pinch me and maybe I'll wake up, Auntie Nicole said with a little laugh. It's hard to believe that all of this is really happening. Pinching won't do any good, Mum told her. It's real and we've got a big problem. What about this killing of Santa on New Year's Eve? Would this weirdo really try to kill Santa Claus? I could tell that Auntie Nicole believed in Santa. She was an adult who believed all that kind of stuff. The Easter Bunny, the Sandman, and the Tooth Fairy. I think she's a kid inside an adult body. According to the evidence, it's very possible he'll go through with it, my other auntie said. Help us find the ice lake, please, 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 Auntie Nicole, begged McKenna. We've got to save Santa. Sure, I'll help. What do you want me to do? Auntie Nicole was getting right into this. Let's brainstorm, said my other auntie. We spent the rest of Boxing Day coming up with all sorts of ideas. Grandma came home in time for dinner, and after we ate, we brainstormed again until we all finally agreed on a plan to stop Gatto Fruge from killing Santa. We went to bed that night very excited and anxious to start on the plan.